Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. We pulled that off. Ah! And I, I decided to write this down because I figured going off the cuff could be a little dangerous. So I want to thank you, Dean Broderick, uh, for that introduction. It's been great working with you this year, and I, have, I, I hope you know that, that we all really do sincerely appreciate everything that you do for us in the school. We really do. Now, in case any of you are upset that I was chosen for this honor, I want to assure you that my selection was entirely based on merit. Uh, and if you don't believe that, I'll tell you that turnout in the speaker election was very low this year. Uh, only five people voted. And uh, as it would happen, four of them were Stephanie. Uh, I, uh, I won by a landslide. So I'm covered either way. Anyway, Mary Sheffer told me I had three minutes to get up here and spit it out. Uh, and it takes me at least 10 minutes to answer a yes or no question. So I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. Uh, as Franklin Pierce said to James Buchanan in 1857, don't screw this up, buddy. Uh, of course. Of course, after my speech, you can all quote Roger B. Taney after his issuing the uh, Dred Scott decision. Oops. Uh, so first, uh, let me take a look at some of our distinguished guests. I'm happy to see former Governor Lynch here. I'm a big fan, sir. Uh, yeah. You, you know, ladies and gentlemen, he, he was the most popular governor in the history of the world, ever. We're talking at like the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, Jesse Ventura level. Uh, anyways, I got, two, I got two real zingers here. I'm going to try them out. Always the consummate showman, he chose not to seek another term right after he vetoed the legislator's attempt to legalize medical marijuana because he, we, he wanted to leave office on a high note. <laughs> oh, oh, it went over well. Okay. All right. And here's another one. By the time he left office, Governor Lynch's administration managed to get New Hampshire's high school dropout rate to around 1%. That's a pretty big accomplishment. And true. Now, yeah. Well, but don't clap yet. While that seems like an impressive achievement, I find it less so because that 1% hangs out on the street corner outside my house every day. <laughs> so thanks for getting it to 0% before bailing. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Olson and boys, uh, we are very honored to have you here. It's certainly no small matter to hear you speak after all that you've accomplished. Really enjoyed your talk this morning. Uh, speaking of which, I'm sure that uh, you're all glad I'm not on stage, or that I am on stage before them, because putting me on after them would be like chasing a bottle of top shelf bourbon with a 50 cent cup of coffee. <laughs> it's cheap, bitter, and would completely ruin your buzz. So. Hey, you know, whatever. I'm trying different stuff out. <clears throat> but I digress. Uh, I realize that nothing I say to wrap this up could make all of you or probably even half of you happy. Uh, this is a very cantankerous group, ladies and gentlemen. If only you knew. Uh, I figured either way, I'm probably going to end up getting decked at the reception afterward. Um, I wore white pants, so let's watch it with that, okay? <laughs> Uh, primarily, and on top of hopefully bringing some levity to this, these proceedings, what I want to say to you is uh, take a moment to appreciate what you've accomplished here. Uh, I know from experience, it was a lot of work, and uh, with all that we're up against uh, in school and after school, uh, you could have easily quit, but you didn't. Um, this has been a wonderful experience, and I really believe that a lot of good has come out of working together with all of you. Um, and whatever compelled you to come here, I think we can all agree uh, that this school is a special place and we have some pretty amazing faculty and staff, uh, except for Buzz Share, <laughs> Professor Buzz Share. <laughs> Hope he wasn't invited. I don't smell him. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> this, this truly is a, uh, a school that actively fosters it, in its students civility, Emotional intelligence, well, okay, civility, not me. I wouldn't be the shining example of that. But there, and there is some emotional intelligence as well. Intellectual growth and the, the practical application of these things, I really truly believe that. Hopefully all of the families and guests can get a sense of that just from hanging around this weekend too. Uh, now to blow all of that out of the water, uh, I just want to share one more anecdote before the, the band plays me off. And I, not because I asked them to, but because I'm going too long. Um, <laughs> Uh, first day of class back in 2010, Professor Kirkland goes around the room 
makes everyone do that little introduction thing. Uh, you had to include some sort of interesting personal fact. Uh, since I'm not necessarily interesting, I made something up. Uh, so while everybody else went on talking about his or her photography or pine cone collecting hobbies, uh, when it was my turn, I said, my name is Jake Sullivan. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. I went to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And in my spare, whoop, whoop, yeah, I heard it somewhere. Uh, and in my spare time, I'm a competitive marathon runner. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> so that clearly was not true. Uh, and while I think Professor Kirkland was struggling to react without seeming offensive, uh, some fellow student behind me burst out laughing. And that's when I knew I was in the right place. And I confirmed this again later on when I got out of a cold call because I wore plaid pants. <laughs> As I said, it's a special place. But I better stop there with the anecdotes and move on to politics and religion. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Very, very truly, it's been an honor to work with all of you and uh, to get to know you. And I, I really uh, I, I've appreciated the experience. And thank you all and congratulations. Thank you very much, Dean Broderick and President Huddleston, and my new best friend, Jake. <laughs> what Jake doesn't know is that I have his forwarding address. <laughs> and I've given that address to those 1% who dropped out of school. <laughs> and Jake, they are going to follow you wherever you go.